So a special knife really deserves a special sheath. Now I'm going to take a piece of A4 paper and I'm just going to fold that, fold that in half. I've split a piece of leather and I've split this down. This piece is sitting at 3.4 plus minus 3.4 mil. So what I'm going to do is now is I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to draw a line on that fold around about 4 mil. So just just a little bit bigger than the 3.4. So what this is doing now is this is going to this is going to give me space at the top of my fold to allow for the thickness of leather that I'm using. So if you're going to be using thicker leather or thinner leather, you basically just do a measure that measure that leather first and then do a line at the top of your fold. That's going to help you get your thickness and spacing right for the sheath. What I'm going to do is now I'm going to place the knife on top of this piece of paper. Because I made this knife, I've obviously got my, my templates, so I'm going to use that, but the process would work exactly the same. I put that template below the line that I've just marked. So it'll be just below that line I've just marked. And then I'll come in and I'll outline the knife. So guys, again, I've used my template for the knife that I made. But if you only have the knife, the process would work exactly the same. And there you can see it will be an exact match of the template that I've just done. You'd follow the same process, outline the knife. So the next thing that I do once this knife template is on the piece of paper, or at least on the, on the paper, is to mark a welt. Now what a welt is, is that middle piece of leather that comes in between as the knife folds, and that prevents the, the, the thread and the stitching from being cut. Um, so that's a very, very important part. It? Right, so the next step now is I'm going to mark the welt. So I like to keep mine at around about 10 mils. Um, so all that is, mark that. I'll mark a, mark a spot that's just 10 mils all the way around the knife. So I'll literally just keep my, put a few markers, a markers on the template as I'm going around. So I have an idea of where my curve line follows. The next thing is just obviously joining those dots and making the, the curve and the sheath look as attractive as you want it to, to look. So guys, remember now as well, like with any design, this is where your personal styling, your per personal preference comes in. Um, there's a lot of different sheaths out there, a lot of different designs for the sheath. So have fun with this project. Um, as, long as, as long as you have got space for a weld, go crazy with the outer design of this knife sheath. It's your creation, have fun with it. So I've got a pattern that I'm happy with. A few little key points when you are cutting your pattern. Obviously the length that you want the, the, the sheath to go to. Um, you don't want a sheath right down the bottom, otherwise your knife has the possibility of falling out. I like to take mine around about two thirds up the back of the, the back of the handle. I find it comfortable to take out. It's my personal preference. The second thing is on your welt. Your welt is going to stop on that line. So that line that we drew in originally, the sheath is going to be cut right to the top of the page, but the welt is only going to come up to that line. Mine is that four mil down. I'm going to show you why as we carry on. Um, one last little point over here, the distance between the top of my back end over there and to the bottom of the welt will be slightly, slightly thicker. So this over here will add up to there, I've got 10 mil, there I've got around about 18 mil, and my handle thickness is 18 mil. So I've got about an extra 4 mil of space when that leather comes over but it's going to be a nice snug tight fit and that knife is going to be secure in the sheath next step taking the pattern that you've just made transferring it onto your piece of leather i'm using this is a piece of vegetable tan leather it's obviously very very nice for uh for knife sheaths um, i've split this down to around about 3.4 mil you can buy leather in this spec so for a knife this size which is a small medium knife i like to use leather between 3.2 3.5 mil thick this would be a nice guideline to start though if it's your first time making sheets 
So guys, before I show you how I transfer the pattern onto this piece of leather, let me introduce myself. My name is Tarek. I've been both a full-time leather worker and a custom knife maker for many years. My work has gone in both genres, has gone around the world. And with this channel, I'm wanting to pass on some of those skills that have helped me along the way. And good to have you here. Let me show you how to move this pattern onto paper now. So at this point, we've obviously just got this pattern on a piece of paper. If you're going to be using it for multiple times, glue it down to a piece of thicker cardboard. Uh, it'll give it a lot easier use. I'm using a silver, they call it a silver pen, made by a company called Schneider out of Germany. They come in a box of 10, but they look like this. It works, they work great for leather. So I'm literally just going to mark the pattern now on this piece of leather. Let's cut this piece of leather out. So we've got the parts cut now and the little belt loop that will be stitched on there. So before we get into staining this leather, I use something called an edge beveler. Now you can buy these tools. I've made the majority of my tools. This has been made as well. This was a motorbike piston and uh, this was cut out with a Dremel tool. So what this does is now it's going to re remove the lip of that leather. There you can see just that little bit of leather that's coming off over there. So what this does is, it's kind of like on your knife maker, if you're the knife maker, it's chamfering an edge. It just gives a much better and more refined feel to, to the work. So before staining, there's only two little places that I actually use the edge beveler. That's one on the, on the belt loop. I do both the front side and the back side. And then on the very back end of the sheath, I do that as well because that whole section is going to be finished before we start stitching. <laughs> Guys, so just a quick little side note for getting the welt. I don't make separate patterns when I'm doing this. What I do is I'll obviously mark the outline using the existing sheath pattern that we've just cut. And then I'll take an awl, just a little sharp pointed object. And I'll just mark several little dots along the inside curve, which obviously is not drawn on. So I'll just mark those little areas and then just line up the dots. Quick little note here on the welt, when you're cutting it out, on the very back piece, and where your, where, your, where your line is right at the back, leave a little bit of excess there, so that when your sheath comes, to, when your sheath comes together, you're gonna to have a little piece of excess that you're gonna trim off, so everything will line up perfectly with doing it that way. So a quick recap, the only three parts that are needed for a sheath, obviously the main body, the welt, and the belt loop. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be staining that leather to a nice rich brown color. I'm going to be fixing the edges of the belt loop and the back section. And I'm going to be putting my logo onto the belt loop. Right, so I'm just about to stain the leather. And what I'm going to do is first I'm going to spray my leather with a bit of water. I personally like the, the look that it gives. Um, when I use the dye and I've just dampened off the leather. It kind of gives it a bit of a mottled variation in color, which is my personal preference. And my hands are always dirty. I mean, I'm in the knife workshop. My hands are always dirty, so I don't mind getting a bit of dye on them, but if you don't want to get your hands dirty, use a pair of gloves. So on the main body of the sheath, I'm only dyeing the, the back edge because this is obviously still going to be glued over with the welt and then stained right at the end. What I also like to do on natural veg tan, I will just dye about an inch, or so stain about an inch and a half upward into that pouch. Power tip. When you finish staining anything, even if you've got more to stain, empty the remainder back into your container I learned that the bad way, knocking over stain onto my goods. 
Right, so what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be putting my logo onto the belt loop and I do this with an arbor press and a brass stamp that I had made. And the easiest way for me to do this is I use one of these little mini blowtorch lighters, I heat up the brass plate and then put it onto the leather. Now I only heat this up for a few seconds and I actually do it to the touch so it doesn't actually burn, it shouldn't burn your fingers. So it's just, it's warm to the touch. I can go a little bit warmer than that. So touch test, it's warm to the touch. Probably a bit hot, probably a bit warmer than warm. I do work with hot steel so it's definitely not burning me. Now I'm not pushing the complete pressure of this arbor press, otherwise it would go straight through the leather. It's just an even pressure. If you decide to use this method, practice on some scrap pieces of leather first and you'll get a feel for how it should be working for you. So what I'm going to be doing now is taking a little bit of beeswax and I'm just rubbing that onto the edge. This will be before I burnish it. What this does is it creates a nice sealed edge which is waterproof and it gives a beautiful finish. So I coat that, I coat that quite, quite nicely with a layer of beeswax on both the back edge and the belt loop. Just the edges that I'm going to be finishing off now. So many of you guys will know this little item here, it's called a bone folder. This is how I started off burnishing my edges, where I would take this bone folder and I would now just rub and heat that wax into the edge. I just want to show you here, it gives a really, really beautiful finish. It seals off the edge beautifully, but because I did so much leather work, I made myself this. So I know a lot of knife makers use a drill and a drill press to make their holes. It really doesn't give a pretty looking stitch though. So what I'm using here is something called a stitching iron. These things are really, really cheap. Um, and they penetrate all the way through the leather and they'll give you a nice, neat mark. So that's what I've done over here on this. So what I'm going to be doing now is placing this onto the body of the, of the knife sheath. Adjusting that where I want it to go. And then I'm actually just going to use that same tool and just push lightly to make those marks. So I've got the holes. I need to stitch that on. Now I normally use that fancy thing standing there in the background, but I've got something better, something I've used for years, something I made myself, and you can make yourself one too. Let's go get that. So we're in my knife workshop, and this is what my stitching pony has been used for now. The extractor pipe. So what I'm gonna do is get this thing cleaned up, take it down to the leather side, and we'll carry on with the stitching. So let's go get that done. So I've stitched the belt loop onto the body of the sheath. What I'm going to be doing now is preparing for putting that or gluing the whole, the whole sheath together before stitching. Put water, get a lot of water going down that spine section over there. What that'll do is soften that so when you bend it over, it'll bend it over without cracking the top or damaging it or... So just get some water going in there. I use a spray bottle.
Stitching the sheath, the edges are nice and clean. I'm gonna be using a stitching iron that has got a four mole between each teeth. Now for knife sheaths, I recommend using either a four mole or a five mole. I've then made myself this little tool over here. There's a four mole gap in between it. So when I mark that down my sheath, I'll be marking it four moles from the edge. If I'm stitching with a five mole one, I'll mark five moles from the edge. So I'm about to stitch this sheath up. I'm gonna be using 0.8 mole Tiger Thread. I like this thickness of thread for a four mole stitch. When I'm doing, when I'm doing a five mole, I use one to 1.2 mole. And then around about seven to eight times the length of the project is what I'll pull out on thread. Make sure your thread is even. seen me stitching with something called a an awl now you do not need to use one of these or learn how to use one of these when you are using stitching irons these things are able to penetrate all the way through the leather I've used an awl for so many years that it's a technique that I prefer you don't need to use it so I'm about to finish this sheath off I like to do three back stitches on a sheath. I'm about to pull the last one through. So I've come back on the stitches themselves. So final step, let's fit this knife into its sheath. Ooh, that is nice and tight. That will loosen up slightly as it wears in. But I'm happy with that fit. So I hope you've got some value out of this video and learned a little bit more about what goes behind the scenes in sheath making. If you enjoyed this video guys, please remember to hit the thumbs up and like this. Subscribe to my channel, I'm going to be adding a lot more videos. And hit that alarm bell so you can get notified when a new video goes up. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.